Okay, uh, everybody wants NZ to be things. Yeah. All right. Um, oh gosh, you know what? I didn't even finish the checklist. Okay, but that that that. Hi everybody. That that that. Oh, Jesse did call, so that's good. Um, Hello. We, yeah, we did the audio thing. Uh, oh, I didn't turn the volume down on my phone, but I did do that. Uh, I did disable notifications. I did that. Um, oh, but I haven't opened the live stream on the phone, so nobody, nobody knows I'm talking. Because if the live stream isn't open on my phone, nobody can see, right? Then it's done. Yeah, nothing here counts. So you can go ahead and give me um, your social like you were going to do. Oh, we're ready now? Yeah, so just give me give me your social security number real quick and um, your credit card numbers and we'll be good to go. I was going to say, last time I thought you said I was supposed to be posting my credit card numbers. I mean, yeah, you should be. So just just go ahead and give me, I'm ready to take them down. Just go Just go ahead. You, you're ready? Yeah. Um, let's wait till we can put them in the glyphs of our language. I feel like that would be <laughs> incredibly <laughs> <laughs> meaningful for all of us. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just to catch everybody up to speed, we were uh, tabulating the results of our last poll to figure out which um, glyphs were going to be associated with which protosounds. And it proved to be slightly more difficult, and then it needed to be reshuffled because we got a couple of responses at the 11th hour. So um, we're doing it now, uh, and by we, I mean Jesse. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's, uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, language. Hey, everybody. Um, how's it? Mm, mm. <laughs> Delicious water. Manna of the gods. All right, but. Um, so obviously next we need to uh, we need to do our last plural, so then that's done, um, and then um, it will be really exciting to go over the results of the poll. But I'll tell you what, since we're since right now you're doing something else, I'm going to do something that you can't help with, and that's really boring, really boring. But I'm going to explain it to everybody. So obviously we haven't got any glyphs here. These, by the way, I borrowed from uh, another font I did, Veda, for reference. Um, it might look a little different, but I just wanted them there just to help me out. Um, but what we're gonna do right now is when we eventually do get characters, uh, we're gonna need to build in a series of contextual ligatures in order to uh, make it so that you can type the font and you get dynamically changing characters. Um, and so what that means is First, we're going to have to come up with a way to romanize this that makes sense, and that's going to be difficult. Because even though there's no schwa in the modern form of the language, what's going to make sense is, um, you know, having a schwa in the, in the writing system. Either that or no. No. I'll have the base form. <clears throat> now, nobody's going to like this, least of all me. But I'm so excited to hear what it is, though. <laughs> I'm going to have the base form be the schwa form, even though it won't be the basic form of the glyph. Okay? And so then, in order to type it, you just type the consonant. But of course, the schwa is going to have a bunch of different stuff happening to it. It's going to have a bunch of different realizations. And so you're just going to need to memorize how you're supposed to type this thing. This is going to be one of the most difficult fonts to type I have ever devised. Uh, wow. Um, and this is, you know, in the modern era when I actually make these things typable. Um, so that's a thing. Anyway. Um, oh, I have extra energy today. I have an absolute dearth of energy. Dearth. Look it up if you don't know it. I have um, two hours less sleep today. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I do pinpoint usually a spot where the writing system has emerged. So the question was, uh, do I pinpoint a spot where the writing system emerged to make that the point where I do the writing system? And yes, I do. In this case, um, I was going to have it start at a very old, early stage with the, you know, graduated evolution of these rabbits. Um, so they're they're going from, you know, hippity rabbits. I'm sorry, rabbits. Yeah, hippity hoppity rabbits. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to um, to Standy Walky Rory Calhoun rabbits rather quickly, um, and so I love this so much. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to start developing our ligature. So with uh, Font Lab, what you do is you open up the Features panel, which is up here. You go to Windows uh, Panels, not Panels, uh, Workspaces, and go to Features and Classes, and it pulls this thing up here at the bottom. 
and you add a feature to your font. Uh, this is an, uh, you can have a number of different types of features, um, but the one that we are interested in is one called Standard Ligatures, um, which works great now. In fact, if you've read my book, The Art of Language Invention, like ignore everything about Rlig and Dlig. Liga works great now. Um, I wonder if I can edit that. Might be pretty extensive. I don't know. I'll, I'll see about it. Anyway, so add the standard ligatures, which is called Liga. It auto generates this stuff for you, feature Liga. And the stuff that starts with a hashtag is quoted, at, quoted out material. It says standard ligatures, then it says feature. And so what we're going to start doing is we're going to start creating our ligatures. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of a distinction between upper and lowercase letters. So uh, what we do is say substitute. And this is how you, you, you essentially have this like A goes to B in the not the environment of CD. Uh, it's only in the environment of C, if that makes sense. So substitute. And then we're going to have a class here of uppercase A through uppercase Z substitute uppercase A through uppercase Z by lowercase a through lowercase Z. And then you end the line with a colon. What this will mean is that um, anytime anybody who works in this font types an uppercase letter, it'll just substitute it with the lowercase version. And then we don't have to worry about the uppercase versions. When you're done with a line of code, you hit this little play button, which is like compile, and it tries to compile it. And if it hits any errors, it tells you what they are. So this does hit an error. The error it hits is none of these glyphs exist because we haven't made them yet. Um, you can flag them so you know which ones are new. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, go ahead and create the missing glyphs. They're all going to be blank for the time being. And for some reason, capital A and capital F are weird. But um, that doesn't matter because now it compiles. Uh, I'll give you an example of how this works by putting something nonce in there. Oh, somebody has Doritos. <laughs> oh, man. Dorito. King of chips. Are you jealous? Yeah. By the way, have you heard the, the, the new thing about, uh, well, it's, I guess, it's old information, but it's kind of recently come to public attention again, that Doritos were invented in Disneyland? In Disneyland, the park? In? Yeah. How is that possible? It was the restaurant near Big Thunder. Um, they made these chips uh, out of like tortillas that they weren't using. And uh, they put like nacho cheese on them. And somebody who was there liked them so much that he said, you yeah, know, we should try to sell these outside the park. And basically you got, uh, uh, Disney just kind of sold him the rights to them. And then they made Doritos. Huh. Oh, anyway. That's really interesting. Yeah. Oh God, they're so good. The, one of life's most difficult challenges is to eat exactly one Dorito. Can you do it? I can't. If you try real hard. Um, okay, so yeah. side note. Yep. I have everything now color coded in the form and we do have yeah. some ties to take care of, okay. but we do have some definites. All right, so I'll, I'll just show people how this works real quick so that I can get rid of those. OK, so I'm going to show you, by the way, how these ligatures work uh, just by posting some, putting some not stuff in here. All right. So let's go back to the default. And I want to show you what happens. If you type, ooh, that's very big. This is what comes out as A as lowercase a, and this uh, is what comes out as uppercase a. You can see they're two different letters. All right, but now let's see what happens if we add features. See, the uppercase a just instantly became lowercase just by having this feature in there. So this uh, foreshadowing, this is how we're gonna do everything in the font. Anyway, so with that out of the way, it's time to move on to more exciting matters. All right. I think I need, uh, I think I need a little something to amp up for this. <clears throat> ah. Is it Kopi Coke time? Kopi Coke. <laughs> ah. Oh, my word. A storm of a thousand flavors, and every flavor 
is Kopiko. Oh my god, I'm looking forward to this. Oh my god, they're getting better. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. It's like a regiment of charging flavors on my tongue. Mmm. That's beautiful. Okay, so are we all ready? We are. So what you're going to see is that in the rows where there are ties, but where the sounds had already been assigned to other ones as clear winners, I've put them in yellow. Okay. Orange is the they, they lost. Light green is the they won. Um, and there is one column, um, the pine nut that I haven't fully resolved yet. Let me um, let me increase the size of this on my window. Oh my God. <laughs> um, my sincere apologies for that. Um, now let's do the real. What, what happened? It just, <laughs> I hit zoom and it got smaller. Here we go. Here we oh, go. Interesting. All right. Okay. So, and then we also have no, a situation where the NZ, the prenasalized Z, uh -huh. is the top for both the acorn and the pine nut. And so we'll have to decide which one actually gets that honor. They both have three votes. So it's not even like one had four votes versus another. Mm. So. Okay. So, first thing to do is let's go with the columns that have a clear undisputed winner mm -hmm. and so we definitely have the bunch of berries will be h okay so let's do we it have that one decided do you want me to put it there yeah i guess i'm done sorting now so there. i can do that there i'll, I'll oh do it gosh. in fact you know what we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it special. Are you gonna do that for the whole row for me? Because I'm just. Yes, gonna I am. <laughs> oh, I use yellow over, so you may want to use a different color. No, it's gold. Oh, gold. Sure, sure. See, I... it's gold because it won. And um, hold on. Look at that. Ah. Okay. What's next? When I when I move it, does it move it for you too? Oh wait, you're just doing stuff. You're I'm just, just doing it. I told just, you change the whole row. You, I'm, you gotta. I'm like, hey, I'm I'm on it. This oh, is cool. Oh, change the whole row. Oh, okay. Hold on. We can do that. Right. Paint format and look at that. Perfect. Okay. So. Perfect. Uh, I mean, I thought you were gonna kind of announce each one. So. Oh, well, you were working so hard on the formatting, I thought I'd go ahead and, like, move ahead. And then I would announce while everybody could see. Um, so, yeah, Bunch of Berries is an H. All um, right. Over here, we have a river coming out of the mountains is, is a Z. Oh, I like that one. Oh, I like that a, one a lot. That's good. A leaf Sorry. is an F. That makes sense. A paw. A paw is a P. Wow. You guys just were influenced by English there. A fire is X. Cool. That cool. feeler fricative, that's nice. The paw print is an L. Oh, I wondered. L was showing up everywhere. I wondered what that was going to win. Um, well, it ties in a couple other places, but I left it there because it's the clear winner in that particular category. You'll see it's yellow in some other ones. Yeah. The hoe is an N. Okay. Um, the river is, I think, going to have to be an S because that's the only one that I don't see assigned elsewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and call it as S, even though notice that it is tied a lot of two-way votes on that one. Got it. <clears throat> um, the prostrate rabbit by elimination is going to be the pre-nasalized B. And I'm going to go ahead and let you just put that one in there for me so that way I don't mess up font or anything. Uh, the teeth is a K, mm -hmm. and here we have a stick is a prenasalized G. Okay. Hopping rabbit is an empty consonant. Yeah. And a flower is an M. Flower is M. Okay. Were there so, any? Yes. Were there any what? There were two blank ones. 
Yes, and so here is where they both had pre-nasalized Z as the top winner, and in both of them, they have three exactly. <laughs> they have three votes exactly okay. um, for that top spot. The one that we are missing is a pre-nasalized D. Okay. We have everything else assigned. The pre-nasalized D did not come up top or tied for top in any of these. Okay, so we... So, so pre-nasalized N and pre... I'm sorry, pre-nasalized Z and pre-nasalized D? Yeah. This one at least got two votes here for the pre-nasalized D. Yeah. So I'm voting to make this pre-nasalized D and make this one a pre-nasalized Z. Yeah, that's how we're going to have to do it. All right. Okay, so the pre-nasalized Z is acorn. Pre-nasalized D is the pine nut. Pine nuts. Yes. Mm. All right. That is it. There we have it. Um, oh, actually, I, I want to write this down on my chart here. So, okay, it, it, it should go in order, right? So this is a bunch of berries? Yeah. Bunch, yes. bunch of berries is H. That's a good one for H. Reminds me of the glyph for shark in Kamakawi, Keva. Um, okay, and then NZ is acorn. ND is pine nut. River coming out of mountains is a regular Z. The uh, leaf is F. Putting a little guide for you. Thank you. Paw is P. Fire is H. Paw print is L. O is N. Oh, that's a good one for N. I always worry about that one because it, it needs to not be complex. River is S. Um, prostrate rabbit is MB. That's good because that's a complex yeah. one. It, it felt like there were some just really good answers once we pulled all this together. Yeah. It was nice. Teeth is K, most pleasant of all sounds to rabbits, apparently. Uh, stick <laughs> is pre-nasalized G. Hopping rabbit is the empty consonant, which is very interesting, by the way. And flower is M. And by the way, the missing one, for in case you were wondering, we already came up with a word for grass, so we didn't include T in this one. T is going to be grass. And there we have it. <laughs> pre nasal sounds all sound very nutty to me. <laughs> I, I, I added a column at the very end, David, to add T just in case. Thank you. You wanted that officially in that chart. So it's now over there with no votes above it because we already had the word. Excellent. All right. So there we have it. Those, uh, that's how we are going to assign our glyphs. Eee! So exciting. All right. So at some point in time, we have to work on designing those, keep those up, keep the sound changes up. Right now, um, let's... We need to get in our document. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so focused on getting that set. <sighs> I'll just I'll just wait. You should yes, and I for a second couldn't find it. I forgot the it's been renamed to Engela or Engala. Yeah, you should <laughs> go ahead and wait. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the okay. on the Simpsons, the characters only have watches when they're going to look at them. Otherwise, they don't. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> and I always inconveniently don't have one on when I do that. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get to ear semaphore. I really want to talk about that, but we got to eat our vegetables first, and that's finishing up this non-eaten things plural. So, here we go. You ready for this? So ready. All right. Okay, let's do a quick little copy-paste. All right, so this is what... Non-eaten things, inedible, inanimate objects, pluralize with uh, two, 
prefix before words that begin with a consonant or a qua prefix. Mm -hmm. uh, before words that begin with a vowel. Um, consonant or the vowel. Ooh. Okay, so with that in mind, we um, need to check to see what kind of assimilation is happening. The um, protoform is what? Oh, that's a great question. I thought we had, did no, pile? Did we put that up above? I mean, somewhere. Um, oh, you know, why do I forget that I can do a find? By the way, is there a specific dialect that says somewheres, or is it just people? Did I say that, or? No, but I. Just asking in general. But, but truth be told, if one of the two of us was going to say it, it would be you, right? That is very true. Yeah. Um, you know what? We never wrote down <laughs> pile. <laughs> we just decided Seriously? to club. But where is the word? Pile. We have a clear pile. origin Shazam. for group <laughs> and for the eaten things. How did we not write this down? Wow, we really didn't. <laughs> Damn it. Welcome <laughs> to our master class. <laughs> on how not to keep notes. Uh, I, Psycho Donkey says the proto word was toe, and I think that he is that that. Uh, I'm sorry. I believe I oh. believe the donkey is correct. Um, I believe so too. I remember. I yeah. remember a schwa. Yeah. So that that makes sense. So it's going to be a vowel that's coming before it. By the way, in case you didn't see this tweet, I, I feel free. I want to share it. There are these two Pokemon in the latest Pokemon game called. Uh, Mudbray and and Mudsdale, and they mm -hmm. look like a little donkey, and then a very powerful horse, um, and uh, a Clydesdale specifically. And then Meridian, my daughter gave it a name in our Pokemon game. She saw him and said that his name should be Donkey Alert, and I thought that was amazing. Nice. So now every time I see a donkey, for example, Psycho Donkey, I think of Donkey Alert. <laughs> Which is just, <laughs> it's so amazing. I just love Donkey <laughs> Alert. All right. Um, okay, so then let's do... Let's write that down somewhere, shall we? <laughs> no, I'm sure, I'm sure Psycho Donkey will always be there to remind us. You, you can never go anywhere. <laughs> what? Did you so, see what happened? What happened? Sorry, look at look at the look at the the, the, the YouTube screen. Uh huh. Pulling it over. Do I need to do more? I need to do more. But I mean, it's the top one that's relevant. The top one, the two. Oh, two Zana. Oh, don't you cry for me. Oh, interesting. But then, so the pre nasalized. Because there's vowel raising. Because there's vowel raising. Golden it. Let's let's see if that applies for all of them. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay. And Someone is yes. saying, um, don't forget the stress. Oh, there it is. Uh, Nikai is saying, don't forget the stress, which would affect the what? vowels, right? Are we... we wouldn't have Tozana, we'd have Tozana, right? Well, hang on. Is the plural, uh, how did we do this? Is the plural Inalu or Inalu? I can't remember. It's Inalu. Stress is not on the prefix. And you can see that in the examples right where you copy and pasted. 
you were right. But they had mentioned um, several people yeah. had come up that, yeah, the, the SCA wasn't really doing well with those stress changes. So that's just well, something we've got to keep in let's mind. Just, let's just throw a, a, something in front of it and see what happens. Um, um, no, we're still getting the ooh. So, oh, the ooh wouldn't do it. It would just be that um, the word wouldn't have been tozana. Like oh, yeah. Tozana. It would be tozana. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, so that's, I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, but importantly, looks like we've got three prefixes, not two. Right. I was going to ask, I don't remember what we had discussed. I remember before a U, it was going to take the T-O, but was it just going to, was it going to drop the O and just be a T in front of an U? Mm -hmm. um, why are you asking me good questions? I, I want you to to think really hard on a day when you've already said that you did not get enough sleep. So. Yeah. I want to make sure <laughs> we we put your brain through a test here. Toga. <laughs> toga becomes toga. I don't know. Um, I think I think you were right that we originally did say that the double oo was gonna kind of you know beat down the o, but we could just have them sit comfortably next to one another. With it, yeah. And make it into just the O toga. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The stress would be on the O, though. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? To, so it'd be like Tauka. So, yeah, that's so, so it is just a T prefix. So Tuka, let, yeah. yeah, let's, let's do T. that. Okay. Four words to begin with a consonant. Um, uh, T. Before words that begin with U. Or. Oh. I equip words to begin with another vowel. <clears throat> um, there. Uh, and then I guess there's no other way to say it, but um, there is there's also a two prefix used before formerly pre-nasalized consonants. Question: Would it also show up before it just plain old nasals? No. Um, no? Okay. And this is why. Um, You can see the it's an O there. And this is because the raising doesn't happen before nasals, it happens before nasal codas. Okay. So, um, but then as to the uh, various assimilations, I believe that voiceless things are gonna, are gonna voice, right? Yes, because it'll be um, between two vowels. And then, Let's see what happens with that as well, and that. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to raise this high enough, but I'll do it in stages. So yeah, we have the voicing of the voiceless uh, stop, voicing of the voiceless fricative, uh, not voicing of the fricative that becomes a sha because it was a sibilant. However, we are going to have voicing of the cha. So it's going to become ja. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, need some examples. Uh, so what we are going to need is uh, let's start with um, C 
initial basic. Um, and VM. I will say we have a couple of examples that we had already um, come up with, so I figure we'll go ahead and add those in as examples. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, okay, uh, N C initial, and then we have C initial voiceless, um, and let's do C initial. Cha. Um, and then that should cover all of the basic variation. Okay, so what words do we already have? So we already have Niki is tooth and it becomes Toniki. All right. That will... I, I put the stress on the toe, which was obviously uncalled for. Absolutely. Disgusting. <laughs> okay, Niki, by the way. Um, Tooth and then toniki, teeth. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. You know something I want to do, because I did I write it down? I don't think I wrote it down. Where did I? Well, I wrote that down there, but I didn't write down the new ones. Give me a moment. I'm going to go over to our Patreon because I have a couple of words that we need to add, and so I'm just going to double check to make sure I see what those are and then write them down. Okay, not that one. Oh, actually, not that while you're one. doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add. Uh, well, actually, oh, I still haven't gotten confirmation on Soren for Metes. So never mind. We're good. We good uh, for right now. Okay. Do I have to hit play on this thing to get it back to where it's supposed to be? I don't remember. That is a wonderful question. Are you talking about to get back to YouTube? Uh, oh. Oh dear. Um, I'm sorry. We have. Um, we have a point that was raised. We already had the word for teeth. Yeah, I just saw that, and I was going to bring that up once you got back. Um, so, yes, we did. So. And it starts with something other than a K. Yeah. Let me, well, let me look at something real quick. And it's ho. K wasn't anywhere for that one. No, it sure wasn't. And N wasn't anywhere on the T. Well, it was there once, but. Oh, there it is. It sure is. That one, one vote. No. Probably somebody who remembered we already had a word for it. <laughs> yeah, so I think that we're going to have to do something different. One of two things. Either, um, either indeed, uh, the uh, K word will be for incisors specifically, or uh, it will be a word for bite, or it will be the word used for rubbing the teeth together happily. <laughs> Purr. Um, I will say we have um, to eat starts with a K, um, and that's cow beaks. Remember, that was our Copico nod. Mm, that's right. And well, so, so cowby is a, a ka word, and it does mean to eat. Let's write down these options here. So, uh, so cowby for this is a. Although now we must do this, by the way, because Wesley Pickles just defined it as happy tea, <laughs> and I feel like we need <laughs> we need something in the dictionary defined as happy tea. Yeah, a verb for rubbing teeth together. And then, or incisors. And by the way, I'm just trusting whoever made the incisors recommendation that they're accurate 
and what the incisor is that the the front teeth because I'm a hell if I know what these teeth are called I figured out molar I know that oh. Okay, rabbits have four <clears throat> incisors, two on the top, two on the bottom. Yeah. They also have cheek teeth that uh -huh. they use to grind their food. These are the six upper premolars and the four lower premolars. Six upper molars and six lower molars. They're cheek teeth. Cheek teeth. Do they not have canines then? Uh, so we have... I don't think so. We have incisors, canines, and molars. Is that correct? Why do I know this? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I mean, like, I know the canines. I honestly forgot those were called incisors, so I'm glad. They're incisors because they're insightful. Ooh. So, wait. So, <laughs> teeth, then, would be the grinding. The niki would be the, the back teeth. Like, it almost has to be because that, that would be, like, what they eat with and use. Whereas for the letter, the glyph itself... It would make sense that it would be the more visible teeth, and so we just mm -hmm. need a different word for that. Right? Yeah. Now, uh, do we want to generalize one of these, or do we want to keep it separate? In other words, uh, it's the tree question, where it's like in English we have a word tree that stands for all trees, but some languages mm -hmm. don't have that word. Um, mm -hmm. Instead, it's only word for like oak, ash, pine, and so forth. Are we going to have a word that generalizes to mean all teeth, or shall we keep them separate? Anybody? Good question. Throw it out. Good question. My, gen oh, German is smart, corner teeth. That's exactly. Um, well, it's often saying keep it separate. Sounds like, sounds like German. <laughs> the mouth is a perfect square. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's corner teeth. Um, Oh, we do have Kiernan's voting for general, but a lot of a lot of people voting for separate. Yep, separate but equal. Let's do it. That was terrible. Sorry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Tons of separate votes. <laughs> we'll just we'll just gloss right over. Okay, tooth. Uh, so this is going to be cheek tooth and cheek tooth. All right. And then uh, it seems like when we get to a voiceless initial one, why don't we go ahead and make our word for incisor there? Okay, with that K. <laughs> um, peg teeth. Uh, yeah, 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 for the K. Uh, okay, so yes, good. So that's that's good. That's done. And then. Oh. And then I did the second one because we actually had two different words that pluralized in two ways. So rain is in like rain was in alu, but then the, the actual like drops were qualu. Qualu, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. So next, U yes. initial. I we probably don't have anything for that, right? We do not. I These are all the words, because all the other words we came up with were just like some, they either are food and adjectives or something that doesn't work. What's this right I here? mean, I guess we do have words for moon star. Moon is an ooh word. Did we want moon to pluralize in this way? Uh, it could, but I, we also have um, stems to use underneath question. Uh, And then, we, sorry, do we need this question anymore? Okay, wait, oh, are, are you there looking? There it is, I see it. Are you, are you looking at where I am? Yeah, I am now. Okay, I just so, highlighted to show you I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can use uni. I don't know why we need to use it, but we can use it for something. <laughs> um, <laughs> were these, maybe these were votes from um, when we were coming up with the words for sun and moon and we liked them, but they just didn't win. Right, okay. Do we still need and this so, question? I don't think we do. Um, no. Okay. Good. All right. Uni. Uni. What shall it mean? It's so uni. Um, <laughs> uni. 
And it's something inedible. And so... Hang on. Psycho don- Donkey it. saying uni sounds like a cloud to, him, to them. And I think... Oh. I think that sounds about right. I do like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I think cloud cloud wins it. I think uni. That's just beautiful. Yeah. And then it'll be toony when there are multiple clouds. Yeah. Which are, yeah, just checking to make sure there are no changes. Reminds me of uh, of Tony, which is the name of uh, something from Finnish um, mythology. All right, let's just give this a quick little. Oh, we should get rid of these as we add them, huh? Should get rid of what? Up here. Oh, the the Sims to use. I'll get. Oh, you already did. Never mind. I think I did. I don't know. Anyway, but what am I yeah, doing? You did. What's uni? You, uni is cloud. Cloud. Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> I mean, it was either that or Rabbit University. Oh my gosh. Which would totally work, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It just changed the formatting on me. You know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm gonna get out. You know. You, you type it. I was. I was gonna get ahead, and it changed the formatting. You can't, you can't delete and then just go. It won't work. Uh, okay, so then, what is it? Cloud. Oh, cloud, 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 cloud. Got it. It's a good day. All right. Clouds are individuable and non-edible. All Indeed. right. Okay, so. Oh, of course. Okay, then um, NC initial. Um, so somebody up above, and I've lost it. I wrote it down really quickly, and now I can't find it. And so I apologize. You can you can shout out who you are, but somebody had said a um, pre nasalized M B A I N U for wood and I know I need to make that Ooh. a superscript but I also know that Mbino? you yes um where are you writing this oh um underneath where you're doing notes so on page 10 if you're looking at got it there Ooh. we go and, and now I made it the actual M Okay, and so the instead of just the superscript, <laughs> this is kind of interesting um, because uh, something like wood, at least as we understand it, wouldn't really have a plural. This is a mass noun. Um, but do you know what lost out on the um, glyph vote is a stump? Stumps are countable. They wouldn't <laughs> yeah. eat the stump, right? Yeah. Uh, I w- and it would be wood inspired. Yeah, I was going to su- suggest something something else, which is that it could be that the singular was mass and that the plural would mean firewood. But um, stump is I mean, is that's good too. Poor stump, yeah. <laughs> which do you like better? Do I want to commit myself to this plurality scheme? Which, I mean, it really is a scheme. Let's, let's be clear. Yes. Life is a scheme. Oh, Mateus is stumping for stump. I mean, now it's got to happen. <laughs> w. Watson, stump sounds great. Although Sylvan is, you know, that's absolutely right. It could be like a log or something. Ooh, cloud tail. Okay, so. Nice. Okay, by new uh, for stump. Let us see what happens. M I new, right? And then that should be, uh, yeah, M I new and two my new. Good. All right. Just, 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 just double checking. All right. We still got our our ooh. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. That's good. That's. You ever seen um. What, what what's it called? Uh, Wooster and Jeeves. With uh, Have Hugh Laurie. Yeah, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. 
I've seen them do skits together. Is it they like a, a sketch show or is it a, a show? No, it was a show show on the BBC. Um, huh. uh, it was a, an adaptation of P.G. Woodhouse's various Jeeves novels. Um, oh, I've read those, yeah. You've read them? Really? Yeah, I've got whole collections of them. I love P.G. Woodhouse. And you've never heard of the show? I have not. I am apparently not up to date on BBC offering. Okay, so it is it is prime Stephen Fry and prime Hugh Laurie. Absolutely a scream. One of the one of the best adaptations I've ever seen. You need to see these. You will love it. The fourth okay. the fourth series went off the rails, but the first three oh, some of the best things I've ever seen. Anyway, nice. anyway, just stumping for stumps just reminded me of Boost for Birdsburg, which is features into series three at some point. Anyway, um, yeah, see, see, uh, VJ thinks Jeeves and Wooster is amazing, and it's it's actually called Jeeves and Wooster, which I find really weird. It feels like it should be Wooster and Jeeves, but it's technically called Jeeves and Wooster. Just weird. I'm writing it down. Yeah, the sketch show. Also... Sketch show, you're thinking it was a bit of Fry and Laurie. Um, thanks to Survivor. There we go. Thank you, Survivor. Um, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, what was the other show you told me I needed to watch? With like a, a lady that solves crimes or something. Oh, Miss Fisher's. Miss Fisher's Murder Thank Mysteries. You. Oh, that's on that's on Netflix. That's easy to find. Miss, uh, Miss Fisher's Murder. Murder Mysteries, yeah. Mysteries. Okay, yes, and, and I needed to write that down because I will forget again if I don't write it down. And importantly, it's the it's the German Fisher, so F I S C H E R, not the. Oh. Yeah. So. Um. I added a C. Uh, Mateus, yes. Uh, I just didn't change that in the sound change thing, uh, just because it wasn't important. Um. Yeah. So does that mean we're ready for C initial voiceless? Yes. Jeeves and Wooster is on YouTube. How's that legal? Anyway, um, but yes, C initial voiceless. Yes. Okay. So incisors, incisors, we can do it. Ka. Ka. <laughs> no, it needs to be like, no, we already have Miki for teeth, the Miki. So <laughs> they open wide. So it needs to be like a. Ah, yeah, like, why not just Kaga? Because it would be Kaka, but then <laughs> change to, to Kaga. <laughs> this is this is reminding me of Kiki Bobo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> goodness gracious. You seen uh, um, 30 Rock? Oh, some of it, not all of it. Get out of here, Sam's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kawa. <laughs> How about Kata? Oh, that's really oh, on the nose. Oh, Juniper said it too. Juniper said it. And I love Juniper's name. So Kata, All right. which then becomes Kata. Yeah. Are you happy with that? I like that. Kata. All right. Oh, Applesauce Project agrees. All right. It's going to become Togata, you know? All right. I do <laughs> like that. Because we got to do and it And I Togata. won't enter it because I will ruin the format. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Kata, which is Incisor. Doesn't that sound like a metal band name? <laughs> Incisor. Togata. <laughs> Speaking of metal band names, you know, way back in the 80s, there was this, there was this band, uh, and this guy came up with this idea, why don't we combine the words for savage and sabotage? And he came up with a band yes, called Sabotage. Sabotage. And then yes. they decided, you know what would be cool? Why don't we do a rock opera? And yes. then the guy who created that said, you, do you know what? I love them, right? You know what would happen? What would be? We should have a band that does nothing but rock operas. And they should all be on a theme. And what theme should that be? Christmas. Why not Christmas? Except, you know, some of their, what I think their best album is, is Beethoven's Last Night. Which is not and about not Christmas? Christmas? No, it's not Christmas. They also have um, Night Castle, which is not Christmas. <laughs> Get on it. Get on it, Peterson. All right. 
Because I have to I, tell okay. you. So he's talking, by the way, about, about Transylvania Orchestra. And I am such a huge fan that I've gone to all of their concerts since like 2002. Wow. And I love them. So I see them every year. My son now goes with me. And that's wow. our annual tradition every December. We go see them. I love them. <laughs> you know, buried in the backyard <laughs> is a little box full of full of the least probable things in the world and you being a diehard fan of the trans-siberian orchestra is in that box <laughs> i've even got a music book that they all signed i i've got and i got a picture of will with the the piano player oh my god now i need to dig up the box and let it out who knows <laughs> what else is going to happen oh it's a good world. I nothing nothing floored me uh, like when you participated in that meme and said albums that you listen to all the way through then seeing Trans Siberian Orchestra on there not the presence of One Republic not the presence of a greatest hits yes it's but a it's a greatest it's, hits <laughs> yes which is why I love it so much. it was between that and um, Oh, what was the album? Where's Blue and they had Stars of Cranberries album. It's Blue Sky and they're all standing together up front anyway. Um, it, it was between those two, but the I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I like the greatest hits. Okay. All right. I'm proud of you for being forthright. Uh, you asked me what I listened to straight through. There it is. And you didn't mention Desiree was on that list. Who? Oh, was That's that right. Was that the fourth one? Yes. How do you not know? Oh, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. Okay. After this, I'm going to be sending you a link to a music video. <laughs> Fine. You got to be. That was that was my theme song of the mid '90s. <laughs> well, right now I'm just going to let you know I'm listening to nothing but Enforcer, which is amazing. It's a band from Sweden who in the 2000s decided that they wanted to make music that sounded like it came from the period of 1979 to 1983 only, and they are so good at it. It sounds era appropriate and their last album all the songs are in english but they decided to do their entire other album uh, just they, they did a spanish version just for the heck of it nice. nice still haven't done anything in swedish but uh you know okay so sorry what are we doing I, people have been talking so vj mentioned i don't know who bucky o'hare i forget was that something else i was supposed to look up bucky o'hare and the toad wars Oh, that's right. You did mention that last time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know how I don't know these things. <laughs> <laughs> but for people who are asking, yes, Trans Siberian Orchestra is very well known. They sell out all of their venues on I mean it's like they they do very well for themselves on their Christmas tour. So does Stephen Eady. <laughs> okay. We Apologies. need a show word. Yeah, we, we need do. A show word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. moving along no but I, um, I i definitely have to revisit those albums i i gave them a once over but i need to give them a twice over um for you <laughs> even though you're gonna begrudgingly listen to a greatest hits album what <laughs> oh my gosh somebody just brought up eurovision i think that means we have to cancel this show. <laughs> how dare you how dare you uh anyway but cha cha um and it needs to be something that you can't eat not like a mouthful of teeth exactly <laughs> okay i'm gonna give you a word okay i'm gonna type it out here so everybody can see it oh how am i in like no it was just the cursor was small oh and i need to get on ipa there we go. Here it comes. That would help. There it comes. Um, just second. Just second. Oh wait, just sec. That's my that's my famous. Let's do. Okay, and that would change. I'm correct, right? In thinking that that would change to. Ching, do right. Ching oh. Do. It, uh, let's that it might it might let's let's take a look. Chinu. Chinu. Oh, because the D. That's right. Okay. It's kind of cute. Okay. So, 
Shinu is the word. What does it mean? <laughs> no, I'm just staring. Oh, Juniper suggested poisonous mushroom. That would not be something edible. That's actually probably something they need a word for. Hmm. 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 But like, which hmm. type of poisonous mushroom? Should there be, like, you know what I mean? Like, should they be I don't know. so knowledgeable of mushrooms that they have, they go to the species level, they just jump straight in, you know, button versus straw and so on. The fungi, they would look very different in terms of how they grow. <laughs> and so maybe... Maybe it wouldn't necessarily, maybe they wouldn't even recognize that they're all in one family at first because you just see these very different shapes. Bibloridian is on it. Rabbits can't eat mushrooms. So, even, oh, good. So they're all poisonous. Yeah, whether they're so poisonous mushroom. or not. Okay, how doesn't matter. Mushroom. Yeah. Because it's inedible and it's in their world. Mushroom it is. <laughs> mushroom is creature. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's actually a valid point from, you know. <laughs> Scientific. I always, I always, I always wanted little mushrooms to be able to kind of walk around. They're so cute. Have tiny little mouths. What? You remember? I've got the mushroom kitchen decorations, right? Love it. Love it. It's the very nineteen. Big fan. Seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. Still a big fan. Mm. Oh, I like that Chinu and Tojini. Mm, yeah. That's nice. Also, I mean, you were born in 1908, so it makes sense. <laughs> Representing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Okay. We got words. We got plurals. We've got forms. Yeah. We're done, right? Yeah, we're, we're done, done with the language. We're I think that's done. all we needed. We are absolutely done. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, Psycho Donkey asks, do you rabbits like cucumber? I have no idea. I didn't even know they couldn't eat mushrooms. I need to learn more about these <laughs> rabbits. Oh, if you heard that, no, that was my daughter going down for a nap. Oh. <sighs> yeah, so it's okay. going to be another one of those days. I do have cats. Oh. They stay away. I don't know why. I would be happy if they were here. Is little Roman over there? No, he's not. He's not. Uh, um, anyway, what do, we were just talking about something super cool. Cucumbers, one of my favorite things. They're very good. I don't know cucumbers. if rabbits like them. And then um, badgers came up. And Mayor Mayor said we need a word for badger, which I do believe there will be badgers, right? So surely eventually they'll get a word. Yeah, even if and not snakes, now. Are snakes edible? <laughs> to some creatures. <laughs> yeah. I nothing has occupied my thoughts in the past few days as much as cucumbers and rabbits. <laughs> Been eating a lot of cucumbers. No, I mean I mean just right now I'm completely okay. wrapped by the idea of cucumbers and rabbits. I'm gonna be devastated if it turns out they don't eat them. Absolutely devastated. Okay, well, uh, I, I would assume you pronounce it Johan says that they can eat cucumbers in small amounts, and I trust. Is that a I reference to the meme? The, uh, you know, you know, like, cats can have a little salami? <laughs> Which I don't know. I don't know this meme. Uh, cucumbers and rabbits, a sequel. Everything is... I'm getting a lot of mixed signals. I feel like I want a rabbit now. You know, when it comes to oh. the when it comes to these rabbits, uh, they would have farms, but it would be very small. See, these these rabbits, they're focused on producing exactly what they need and no more, right? Um, they they find the the innovations of of the mice absolutely unfathomable, you know. It's like, well, you know, you could produce that much, but why not produce four times that much and then put it in storage? They just, that makes no sense to them. Um, the mice are the TP hoarders, aren't they? No. Rabbits should eat pizza. 
Oh, they can get diarrhea from cucumber if they eat too much. But honestly, so can we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that can go for anything. Um, excellent. So W. Watson had been somewhere up here. It's gotten off on a cucumber discussion, but had mentioned, does this mean it's verb time? Yeah, I, I mean, it probably, it probably is. It probably is. I mean, I would first see this and prepositions are all tied together. I would love mm -hmm. to get a handle on that. But we, to borrow an expression from your area, might could do a little verbing. <laughs> We, we may can go there. <laughs> Might we could? <laughs> you can't do that. Don't don't stretch it. <laughs> speaking of speaking of things you can't do, gosh, what was I watching? Um, it was it was a funny show. No, it was Ducktales. You know, uh, was great. And so, which muscles should I start smashing? What? It was like, and he just said it off the cut. <laughs> um, or it was, it, it wasn't exactly that. I, I wrote it on Twitter. Okay, anyway, verbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we sorry, a little before verb. we get there, a little bit before we get there, uh -huh. uh, Yolige Jasper, or Jolige, uh, however, did point out that we do have a typo in number 13 of our sound rules. Mm -hmm. and Because it says the weak fricatives... P, T, and K voice to B, D, and G. And um, as, sorry if I say it wrong, as Jolie is pointing out, those are not fricatives. Well, that's why they're weak fricatives. They're so weak, they're not even fricatives. <laughs> and you prefer stops, right? Yeah, it literally says voiceless stop right above it. Some people like the word plosive. I just like to know who I'm dealing with. <clears throat> stop. A plosive or a stop. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh, I just fixed it. Did, did you go back and were you going <laughs> to... I, I went back and refixed it because it needed to say stops, not stop. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> we're both having great on it days. Yeah. You okay. Know, there, was okay. A, there was a good theory, by the way, behind that. I loved that there were plosives, implosives, and then explosives, which were ejectives. Um, but, you know, much like Americanist transcription, that went out with the 70s. <sighs> All right. So All right. now I think we're back. I don't see any other comments that would take us down a different. Yeah. God, I hate doing this. I hate them so much. I hate them so much because of what they do. They do everything. Yes. And using them. I hate using them even more. In all languages <laughs> or, or just when you need to translate something? I am almost pretty okay with the verbs of English. However, there is a part where they break down. So, for example, in order for me to be over at your place and not hungry, I would have had to have had eaten before getting on the plane. Right. You think that's right? Did you say something wrong? I would have had to have had eaten. Yeah. You're fine with that? Would have had to have. Would have had to have eaten. Yeah. Would have had to have had. Have had eaten. Yeah. Why you're, not? You okay with that? Why not? All right. All right. Um, Raises some eyebrows in polite society is all I'm saying. What polite society do I belong to? <laughs> um, okay. So right. here is an example sentence, by the way, speaking of interesting things. And yeah. I'm just going to type it right above where it says adjectives in our document. You got it. Um, oh, and it's underlined because why not? So a student of mine, right now they're doing a project where they have to label certain lexical categories. And she emailed me with this sentence and said, I'm confused about what part of speech I'll get out is and i'm like oh my gosh what i mean it's idiomatic so but it's being used as this hyphenated compound construction 
Um, it only comes after preposition, so it's kind of nouny. But it like, is a noun. Yeah. What? Well, it's a <laughs> it's a noun that doesn't take an article, but we got lots of things. You know, you could say that that was on target. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, you could say on the target, but it's a little odd. You can't say on a target. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, this is just one of those. So you just put a triangle right above that bad boy and put NP. <laughs> You're done. Well, and that's what I said. Noun <laughs> is what it should be labeled. It's not perfect, but it's like that's how it acts. So we're going to make it a noun. But I was just like, oh, oh, English. I love the things you do. Okay. Okay, so... And, yeah, Sylvan is right. Yaldentive. 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 do that one. Oh Yaldentive. <laughs> <laughs> I do know there's a... Like, you hear it in speech, like, y'all all need to leave. You know, like, something like that. And when you see it in writing, it looks awful. But when you hear it... it y'all all need normal. to leave, yeah. Yeah, it like, sounds normal. But, like, when you see it in writing, it's the most horrific looking thing <laughs> that's pretty cool looks like uh what was i gonna say uh catalan with its l's with dots everywhere <laughs> <laughs> nice. okay so sorry going to Ingala. so yeah nouns this and verbs this is this is my idea this is my idea x and then then why uh with the appropriate you know the so in other words we're, we're getting a, a prefix reduplication here and then we are getting a distinction so and that was my idea for where to start these verbs so the base form let's see you know cabby is not good let's do something that's more basic just cvcv um, do we have any verbs yet that... Ooh, I'll scroll up and I will oh, thank you. let you know. Um, do you want CVCV in proto form? Yeah, yeah, yes. And ideally, no, um, don't do any prenasalized consonants for this. Something super then basic. No, because we only have Kalbi and Chanu. Okay. Sleep and eat. Wow, Chanu and sleep, that's a good one. Right? Yeah, who came up with that? Really nice. Yeah. Probably one of our lovely commenters. Right on. Okay, so we need uh, we need a basic verb. I want it to be transitive. Um, you know, something like eat. Um, mm -hmm. This is always where I run into problems because every single verb is an entire universe and a nightmare. Every single one. But, and of course, the first like four verbs that pop to my mind are intransitive. So I'm like, I don't I don't know that they can. Yeah. Pop something. <laughs> Even something like eat. I mean, it's controversial coming up with a verb right. for eat because it's like, well, not all languages have a single word for that. I hate right. verbs so right. much. I hate them so much. What, them. Okay, so like. Grind teeth. Yeah, we could do that since it's so basic to their culture. But then that's intransitive. Um, I feel like that would be potentially idiomatic, but like hit, strike, yeah, psycho donkey has some good ones there. Um, I was also like, mm -hmm. break was mentioned up above somewhere no. it's flying by now god no, um, not break no. what about like rub because rub would be like a pretty normal thing um yeah yeah it's just uh, that bend it, oh bend gets into all sorts of fun things yeah uh, and, bend. and it's like rub could also be an iterative of some other verb <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taste, press no no push, push. there is it is it? push okay. The shovesy little rabbits are going to push things. Okay, what are we going to have for push? Just simple consonants. Oh, oh we just need, yes. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 we have it, we have it. Oh, no, but you know what? That starts with an M. Okay, no, but we need, you know, we need two. We need something that starts with something that's definitely not going to change and something that starts with something that's definitely going to change. So, something that starts with a voiceless consonant or, uh, I'm sorry, voiceless stop or a voiceless fricative. But for our other one, Manu, this is going to be great. Manu is going to be the word for push. Um, that is for one of our patrons. So let's start with that. Manu. And then you said we need a voiceless stop or a fricative? 
Uh, yes. Um, so what about... Paka is good. Tufu, what, whatever. What, what? Oh, I, was, <laughs> I had Suta, um, or Paka, um, because if you, I mean, if you just want to deal in some antonyms, <laughs> you can put things, you can pull things. That's good. Um, pulling is so much more complex, but <laughs> than pushing, I mean... Sure. Think about it. it. Like, if you had to teach some sort of entity that was doing it, being a human for the very first time to do things, you'd teach them pushing before pulling, wouldn't you? In rabbit culture, fight. Because that would be like their original grab before their hands became all handy like. So you think that the word for bite. They would bite, bite things to like pick it up, right? They would just bite it. So you think doing that rather than having it. Uh, derived from the word for incisor would make sense because I, I, I feel you. I see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay. It could be related. Um, not hop, and I'll tell you why. That's going to be the empty consonant, so I want to do something very specific for that. Um, so, uh, what do we think? Paka for bite? Is that good? That feels very bitey. Hmm. And then it'd be Paga. Paga, yeah. Paga. Okay. All right, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Here we go. By the way, we need to remember to start doing more um, schwas in our proto because we're not That's using it enough. I was going to say, if you notice a lot of the proto forms I come up with, I try to shove a schwa in there. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's good. <laughs> and then this would be Pabaga. So this is where we're going to start, and this is where our discussion will begin. The okay. first thing that we need to talk about is form. So obviously, you see, based on the way this goes, I have made a decision when it comes to stress. Did I make the right one? I feel, okay, so maybe it's just because I like idiosyncrasies in language. Um, if this is not meant to be a prefix that came from a separate word before it, because the only reason those prefixes on nouns don't have the stress is because we decided that in saying the phrases and you had that, that beautiful phrase on the cigar box where it's like mm -hmm. you had pointed out in Spanish, there's more stress on the second word usually. Um, and so we had decided that that's the only reason. If this is just part of how it, it goes, I feel like this would... <laughs> Wesley Pickles is right. I feel like the stress should remain up front. I like that. Okay. So that's, that's fine for step number one. Step number two is a little more complicated because step number two is, should there be further reduction? So, obviously, what we're going to be hap what's going to be happening here is standard um, uh, intervocalic lenition for this language. However, what is going to happen is that the original vowel of all of these words is going to become like super unstressed in this environment. Mm -hmm. So, we bring back the schwa. Well, what I was going to suggest, like this is, these are some things that could happen. While you're typing that, quick question. Yeah. Wouldn't push be manu instead of manu? Yes, 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 it would. Thank you. Unless, can we get? because this is somebody's word. If he wanted it to be Manu as opposed to Manu, then it should be. Can we get it if we do a different proto form? How would we get the, uh... We cannot. Because the stress. So it would have to have a, a bow in front of it. Mm-hmm. 
I'm, so, I'm really starting to think that we should just remove the the ah the, with the two dots from the language and just make a note about stress and pronunciation. I mean, I hate to say that because I like things to be phonetic, but it's fully predictable if you know the stress. Mm -hmm. If anything, we could just remove the the diaresis and add a stress mark anytime it's not what word initial or anti penultimate no word initial right yeah word initial right yeah because it would normally be word initial yeah so like how spanish only gives the accent marks if it's different from what you would expect yeah i hate to do that because it's going to entail a lot of changes but yeah, like. But I mean, now is the time to do it. Yeah, if we're going to change. <laughs> it just—it just feels like we don't need that, and so it's. I mean, you never have that vowel if it's not stressed, and you never see the other vowel, um, in stressed syllables except. For here. Okay, so it'd be like these two forms. Yeah. Which one do we like better? I'm such a fan of the umlaut dots, but, but. Wow, uh, Nikai is very, very excited about the stress marking option. Um. It is uh, <clears throat> maximizing clarity for us. And I, I do like the idea of marking stress, especially as stress is not always predictable anymore. Yeah. Um, and so having something to consistently mark stress that's not on the first syllable yeah. um, would be really, really good. Um, <sighs> and we do always forget the stress. You're as right. I was pointing out. You're right. Um, and that kind of, I want everybody to know that this decision kind of kills me a little because I really, really do like the dots. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Um, if only there were... However, I think it would be helpful across the board to just mark stress. And then it would be, if it's got the stress mark above it, it's at. If it doesn't, then it's not. Or if it's the first syllable, like Manu, it mm -hmm. would just be like, that's how you say it. If only, if only there were something. <gasps> uh, if only there were something more. Uh, where W. Watson suggests marking stress with diureses. No, I, mean, I wouldn't do that. Just, that's, that's ridiculous. Just saying. No. Um, I like the idea, W. Watson. I would totally do it just because I like the dots. <laughs> Oh. I know. The umlaut needs to go rest in peace with the central vowel. <laughs> yeah. Now it, now the central vowel can have a friend. <laughs> the umlaut. Oh well, I, I was gonna I was gonna do a joke about using the double acute as rabbit ears, but because you know we should obviously there should be a rabbit ear diacritic oh. somewhere, but no, that's that, all right. That's one of the one of the key, right? No, it's not that one. They I have, swear, they that's have one it, of the special keys. Well, they have it for O and U because those are used in uh, Hungarian. But the the one for A is buried. It, it does exist. It does exist. Okay. I'll show it to you. It's not in the regular Latin. You have to go over to the Unicode spaces. I think it's, is it Latin extended A? Uh, no, it, I think it's Latin extended B. Oh no. I guess it's a sad sign though if we can't find it. <laughs> yeah. That may not be our best option then. Anyway, I don't even know. Oh. We're we're just we're just we're wasting time right now. Anyway though, no, we're not going to use the uh diuresis for stress. We're going to use just a single one and I think it's going to happen a little like this. 
<laughs> I found it by itself, but I can't figure out how to make it merge with a letter from where I am. But actually, no, we can't make that whole change because um, not everywhere that would need to be stressed. So copy. Boop. So we're just going to start here. Bam. Oh my goodness, they've got so many other options. Oh, there. Do you see it? <laughs> Did somebody do the double acute over the A? Did somebody find it? I did. I did. There it's it is. It's going the wrong direction, though, I think. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, no, yeah, that, that's yeah, that's not the one. Um, but, yeah, somebody found it, uh, and somebody mentioned who found it. Eternal found. Yeah, Eternal found it. It's there. It's there. Um, but I don't think it exists for I or... Um, I, I wanted to use it for something, but I can't remember what. Anyway doesn't matter doesn't matter all right it's done so okay that's that and so I'll stop making random marks then on that yeah in fact <laughs> you're gonna cut me off 22 <laughs> okay it's now in my frequently used because I, I hit it so many times <laughs> Oh my goodness. Why is this not being cool? Oh, replace and find. That's what I need to do. I'm sorry. There we go. And then that one needs to be Nalu. Uh, oh, this is going to this is going to be this is going to be rough. All right. Can we leave the document name with the umlaut just to make me happy? Just well, the, not that part, but the actual file name. For 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 the remainder of the episode, sure. Ah, oh, you're gonna take it away from me. Like the okay, uh, oh, brother. Okay. And uh, that. Oh wait. Oh boy, we're getting the lag. Okay. Getting that all fixed. That's, oh, that little, they really do look like little rabbit ears with the little. Yeah. That is cute. But yeah, I don't think it's very practical to easily type, apparently. Although, people seem to be doing just fine with it. Done. All right, so, no more. Now, what are we doing? <laughs> verbs or something? Oh, we right. were on verbs, and you had typed... That's right. Okay, here we go. So This Manu note. And then, um, yeah, I suppose. And then, or. Then we would get, we would get codas. Or. Uh, I'm feeling number one. The only thing is that this would mean that um, verbs would be the only place in the entire language where there would be codas, which would mean that we might want to propose a general sound change where if we have the configuration uh, right, and then the, then that becomes right. 
This would have to be a very late sound change. One moment while I consider how that may affect. And that would only be if it's initial stress. Yeah. I don't think we have any other words that we have developed that that would affect because stress is on. I think it would affect a number of words. Actually, the only one I found so far, I think, is Hanali, which is night. That would have to be Hanley because. About this word for green onion shoot. Also, we need to start. We need to start. Oh, yeah, I, I, I missed that one. Sorry. Yeah. We need to start adding some stress here. Um, okay, so. So maybe not that rule then. I, I just don't remember. What was the protoform for uh, green onion shoot? Anybody? Um, I can look it up in just a second. Green onion shoot comes from an initial prenasal Z though. Thank you. Okay, so no, it should be. No, so it, no, we're fine. We're fine. Okay, because it would, oh, because that vowel was added. Okay. Yeah. Because the, okay, so then going the page, two pages above that, we have our word for night, um, which was like a, a special, I forget who came up with it, but we were really taken with it, with that mouthful of stars. Yes. Um, it's compound. And so this would be stressed on the first syllable. And this would be different from like we had decided that Anelli. there would be potentially two forms of yeah. So that would because be this is the like this is where of. like the mouthful retained its full like it was two words coming together instead of like the normal plural. Yeah, so it would be Hanley, um, and of course depending on where the sound change happened, it could come out as Handley, but probably I think it would come after that. It'd be a late sound change, so it'd be Hanley. <sighs> That's really tough. Um, I mean, we we, I, could, we could say it doesn't apply across compounds. Um, because then that would alleviate, because on the next page we don't have it yet, but we do have that note that there would be a difference between saying heart rabbit, meaning rabbit's heart, and heart rabbit with funny stress. And... So, like, that would get away from those compounds having to worry about that. Yeah. Um, Metes raises a good point. Why not just not reduce it? Um, yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I think chat does delete um, uh, um, links just by default. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking so because somebody else had like way, way, way before had, I think, posted a Google page on 15 things not to feed rabbits and nothing came through. So I think that was. Oh, my God. Um, well, I guess here is my thinking then. Mm -hmm. If we're not going to reduce these, so they're all going to be at least three syllables. I want these things to be used as little as possible. And by these things, you mean the, the words? The reduplicated forms. I want them to be used as little mm -hmm. as possible. And so here is my proposal. What do you think? 
Are you where I'm at? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm staring. I'm thinking. I should probably think out loud since it's probably not fun to watch somebody look at a screen. <laughs> oh, speaking but there you of which, have it. my little find window is covering up the top of your head. Very sorry. Remove that. Oh, I'm quite all right with that. Um, I think I like it. I, I'm i trying to think, because then it would like sort of, it would add to the um, kind of the effect of its ongoing and it's a, a continuation, kind of stretching it out. Yeah. Kind of like how ASL like has that iterative kind of mm -hmm. imperfective stretching out reduplicated sign thing. Yeah. So that's kind of... I like that idea. I still feel like old rabbits would get a syllable there, but it would almost be schwa-like just in how it's said. And I think young rabbits would be like moving this direction. I'm just going to say like, I feel like there's a generational gap. Oh, I think so too. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's just a matter of time. The question is where, um, where in that thing we sit. Okay. Um, but I'm going to, Mamanu. Yeah, Mamanu. Mamanu. Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. That's nice. Kaga. Kaga. Okay. Kaga. Okay. And it kind of naturally sort of schwa's itself out anyway. Yeah. Um, when you're in quick speech, speeching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Those things. Um, mm. So I like that. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, I might also use this for subjunctive. Um, but don't you worry about that. Yeah. Was I worried? I I could you were thinking about starting to worry. I could tell. Always, always. <laughs> I am thinking I may need to refill my water bottle because I've gone through twenty one ounces in this one and a half hours and I already feel dehydrated. Um so I Look can still I hear here. you. Look how much I, know, I got I don't here. Know. How did you not drink more than that? Like entire bottle gone. Um, so I'm going to still be able to hear you. So you can't say anything bad, but I'm going to go over there. And when you hear water, I promise it's like it's, I'm getting water. 16 minutes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, 16. We have 26 minutes left. And like, there's no way I'm going to be able to keep talking. All right. Without killing my throat, without water. But I'm listening. Okay. I like where we're going. Okay. I'm walking away. I'm actually really but glad that your chair is as torn up as mine is. Do we have the same chair? Oh my. Maybe. Um, wow. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty sad. Nice Cheerios in Canada Dry product placement. Well done. Um, oh yeah, ginger ale, if you recall. Anyway, now that now that Jessie's gone, let's let's talk about her replacement. I don't know if you've noticed, but. She's been kind of flying off the handle, like this whole refilling of water. Like I don't know what to do, honestly anymore. It's just a total, it's gotten total to a breaking move, point, isn't it? Gotten to a breaking point. Just ridiculous. Um, anyway, but uh, uh, so yeah, um, something we skipped over, uh, which Nakai brought up, is how the reduplication worked. I jumped straight to a single syllable, um, and. I suppose properly I ought not to have done that. Um, though I, I will say this, I don't necessarily, necessarily buy into the idea that all reduplication begins as full reduplication. I don't necessarily buy that. Um, I think there are, there are possibilities where it doesn't. But, uh, but yes, there, there, could, there could have been a stage like this and like this which would raise questions about what happened to this part um, for those words. Uh, and what you could actually see is like if these things drop out. OK, now it's kind of interesting. If you had this. OK, stick with me here. Would that be the assumption that the original stress valve gets a secondary stress? Yes, so it primary would. primary stress here is secondary, and that's why that would still be an important construction here? Yes. 
Okay. So because otherwise you would think that the end would be dropping out because we've got initial stress. Yeah. So just just follow where I'm going here. Um, also, Wesley Pickles says that you should replace me with central vowels. <laughs> I feel much better though. I can think again once I have nice cold water. <laughs> Ice-cold water. The Copico of Texas. <laughs> All right. And then, what does stress schwa become? It becomes eh, right? Yeah. Wait, how though? How, is this metathesis going on here? No. Why wouldn't that be the the original stressed vowel? It's racing before a nasal coda. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you could do a thing like this. And notice here, we have a vowel change. And here, we actually don't have voicing. Because it was blocked here. But the, this would still be voiced, right? Yes, it would. Sorry. You should be. Yeah, I am. I Especially really am. after all that trash talk. I know. It was terrible. Um, so, Papaga. Papaga. So, the, the, so, I mean, it, it's kind of cool yeah. in that um, this changes, but kind of also not cool in that this doesn't change. Um, so, you're actually seeing a lot less of uh, of changes and then there's also the question of what do you do with proto forms like this right because then there's just all kinds of junk going on there but essentially what the the steps to determining what the reduplicated form would be it would be find the Find the first consonant after the first uh, syllable. Assume that consonant is the coda of the previous vowel. Apply sound changes as if the coda were there. Delete the coda. Attach the prefix. So, so are we saying, though, in this way, this way would require assuming that at one point the K was the coda? And so at one point the language allowed codas, and then they were like, no. Uh, yeah, essentially. Um, it, 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 basically, the, the coda it asserted itself because the vowel dropped out. The reduced vowel just got reduced. So... I mean, it wouldn't have lasted long, but it would be the type of thing where it would have just said, "No, we need to, we need to get rid of this." Now, depending on how we slot these, I guess you could get voicing here if the voicing happened after the reduction here. Um, then we could have our cake and eat it too, I suppose. Because then you would get the vowel change when you have a nasal. But we would still get Papaga here. Yeah. Which I like better than Papaga. Uh, the full reduplication would be before the insertion of the copy vowel um, in in stop final proto forms, and also before the insertion of the um, epithetic schwa at the beginning of words. And I mean, the voiceless stops don't become voiced until number 13 on our list so oh boy i suppose we can have our cake and eat it too is that are you liking this is that i i like it is this it aesthetically i like it but are you saying yes to the sound change i'm saying yes to the dress <laughs> but i'm just saying it's gonna go, it's gonna be a lot of work <laughs> yes, it will. To figure um, it out. 
Um, Especially like you had said, where we get yeah the the bigger ones. And also, can we go ahead and run through what it would be like for something like Calby? Yeah, and until um, by the way, until we memorize this, I'm keeping all of this up so that please. we can remember it. Okay, here we because, go. So this was the protoform of to eat. Yeah, so we initially had uh, cowpea cowpea, which became cowpea, or cowpea, if you prefer, cowpea. Doesn't matter, because it's now going to become... Because it's going to die anyway. Yep, cowp cowpea, which is going to become... Um, there's no raising, uh, so cope copy. And then, yeah, so essentially it's going to become Kogobi. I'm sorry, Kogobi. I think we kept the AU because Kogobi is our word. Our I'm, modern I'm word sorry, you're eat. right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, because I think we were surprised that our patrons didn't vote the more aggressive yes. vowel changes through, and it oh, would have been Kogobi. Yeah. Um, the only. The only thing I would add shouldn't the KP geminate the P and then degeminate. I mean, I feel like that would make more sense, quite frankly. Um, but it won't always be stops coming back to back, and so that would there'd be a lot of gemination. I guess we'd have to. Think about. You know what, though, he's uh, absolutely right, though. And if we do that, though, then this needs to remain a P and not voice, right? Yep. Because and, and this one needs to. Calcobi. Calcobi. Now, Calcobi. something Calcobi. else that could happen is at this stage, there could be another sound change that kills um, essentially by moraic syllables. Here's honestly, okay, what would you think about that where it reduces this to the nearest? So uh, it's not two diphthongs back to back. This is actually what I was thinking of. I'll remember Cal Kobe, I promise. Just like you remembered all the, the word for pile. <laughs> <laughs> But wouldn't the first one with the initial stress, wouldn't it maintain its full glory? This is, the, this is the, the primary concern right here. This is a closed syllable. This is an open syllable. And so you'd be more likely to... Cacaobi. Yeah, and so, by the way, this is an A. To become cop. It's, it's an A, Cacaobi. Say it again. Cacaobi. Because it's got the stress. Well, also because it came from this. So this thing was already a little fronted or, or centralized. It didn't, it didn't back because it was a part of the diphthong. <laughs> Where's the stress? These are all stressed initially. All of them are stressed initially. Yes. Where is the stress? It's all it's all in here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah, I am seeing it. I think he's right, Papaga. Except yeah. it would be Papaga. Papaga. So we would get like a stage here where it would be Like that. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing, though. If, if this is going to happen, then this should probably be language wide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's getting spicy now. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. 
Okay, just gonna just gonna make just make a couple notes here. Give me, give me Do you remember when you had those three options up and life was so simple? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Okay, hold on a sec. So, um, somehow refilling on water just made things more complex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what happens when you add Texas Copico to the mix. All right. Apparently in Texas, though, it's Catco beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's going to do that. And that's also going to reduce to that. Um, the, the schwa forms are already reduced. So that's fine. And then and the question is for the forms that have that start with the high vowels, like should cha become chi? So like chalu. So like Tianu, for example. Oh it was an N, not an L, that's right. Right. Should it Yeah, Tianu. So is sleep, which became Chanu. So, oh dear. Yes, because it's going to be shoved in. It's going to have a, a nasal, right? Yes. Hold on. Well, I, okay. So yes, for the wrong reasons. Uh, let's. Um, there's something interesting there that we need to look at. But how about um, what's something uncontroversial? Um, L. Let's do Chiala. Is this going to become Chi? Um, Or no, because no, because it would, the A, because the the E is merging with the T to make chala. Uh, but right? at what stage? But at what stage? That's the question. At what stage? Well, I think it has to happen whenever you get the cha, like as soon as it merges. Right. I don't know why I can't just highlight here. As soon as that merges to the cha, you've dropped out the I, so it should just be cha. Chachalu. Okay, let's. I'm and gonna, would that be Chachalu? Would that no? No, it wouldn't because it's not between vowels at the point where at the relative point. I think. I think. I think. I think. I think. Where's but the um, L would stick around? The L would make it voiced. It's in between two voice sounds, so it'd be Chachalu. Um, are we doing in between voice sounds or voiced vowels, uh, or vowels? Uh. Oh, that is okay. So the stops are only between vowels. Okay, we fricative lenition is only between vowels. Okay, so never mind. Never mind. Oh. Well, on the other hand, what I have written here is between vowel and C plus vocalic, which means a glide. That's what it means. It means a glide. I'm sorry, not an L. Okay, um, let me just see where the ch is. Where is the palatalization? Palatalization is super late. Super late. But however, the palatalization does okay. occur before degemination. But that doesn't matter. Where's the, where's the degemination? It comes directly after palatalization. What is... Oh, never mind. I was looking at palatal, palatal assimilation, and that is like rule okay. number 18, so I was confused for a second. Okay, so obviously the vowel-vowel simplification has to occur before degemination. It has to. Um, but where it re occurs with respect to palatalization is important. It feels like it's probably around the same place. Velar minus stop. Little yeah. Oh, oh, it's um, it's it, it, it's it's whether it's 
It's whether it's become a glide. That's the that's the thing. It's whether it's become a glide. Okay, where does that happen? Seven. Hiatus resolution. Hiatus resolution. You're right. You are right. So unless this is gonna happen here, which it doesn't make sense so it, that it would. It would just be a mediary stage of Tia. <gasps> oh wait. Prenasal raising occurs right here. Which would be important for Chanu. Yeah. Um, Not for our fake Chalu. Right. So, okay, this means in order for prenasal raising to happen, the deletion of the vowel has to happen before 8. To that make it a coda. It should happen in between seven and eight. So yes, it is cha chalu, not chi chalu. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and write this in so we can start somewhere. And it's. Uh. What are we calling this? We are calling reduplication the reduction. I don't know. Unstressed. <laughs> Reduplicated unstressed. Yeah, I, that's really I think the only thing that we could say. Uh, the. Minus yeah, I want to see how you're gonna write this. Let's see goes to nothing in the environment of Jesus what happens with the initial words <laughs> can you just say like word one word two anu anu versus anus anus why do I have to do anus gosh darn it yeah that's a good question <laughs> When English gets in the way of your found language, brain. Right? I think. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is why I hate this. Of course, it was the verbs. Um, but yeah, I am kind of embarrassed that I wrote that, though. I, I could have written anything. I could have written anything, but it. Anything. Just, it had to be that. It had to be that. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. Uh, well, okay. Let's just change it to Elu, all right? Elu, Elu, Elus, Elus, all right? So yes. embarrassed. Okay. Uh, you should be. Elu, 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 Elu. Elu, Elu. Okay, so that, that one's easy. Oh, goodness gracious. Monkey trumpets. I think we're just going to say that. Monkey trumpets in our life. I think we're just going to delete those for the time being. Um, but uh, so this thing comes. Of course, I'm also surprised we didn't make reduplication simpler. I remember that bright, shining moment when. It was just going to be the first syllable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, and then we need... And Matase, you're absolutely right. Conlanging comes with ample confusion for all <laughs> conlangers. <laughs> oh, crap. Don't do that. Why would it do uh, that? Yeah. Why would it do I that? I don't know. Oh, probably because you did it like mid word and then it thinks you want the whole word. <laughs> that's like a it's like a Microsoft Word feature. Oh, you probably meant this. It really is. However, do you want to know something that's really cool? Yes. About Word that I wish pages so, you know, developers of pages take note. Mm-hmm. 
in all Word, watching. the advanced find options are so advanced that you can search for just superscripted or subscripted forms. So if you're trying to, say, label things in a document consistently and you want to find those labels later, with pages mm -hmm. you have to be very careful to find a superscript that would not naturally occur in English, so that way when you search it you only get the, those labels. But in Word, you can be like, no, nah, only find me the string if it's a superscript. Does match case work? Yeah, it does. It does. It's very advanced. The no, find features. Which... No. Okay, no, it doesn't. I was going to say, does match case in, in pages work? Pages, no. Pages find feature is not great. You just, you got to. Well, it has, it has whole it words in match case, but, um, but no, you can't just. All right. And also Word brings up a pane where like you can see all the results displayed like a little corpus. It's mm. beautiful. And it's the only reason that for certain projects I prefer Word over pages. Yeah. Otherwise I love pages. Anyway, um, no, this is a, this is prefix, prefix reduplication. Um, because you know, we have uh, we have initial stress. It's it's um, Oh. Oh. Oh crap. Oh no. Should it be second? <laughs> because of where the modifiers are. I still feel like no. Oh no. Are you talking about because it's head initial? Yeah. Might have to look this up. Is this something that we need to, because we have two minutes left? It's not going to be resolved here. I'm going to go to my Hawaiian resources when we're done and take a look. But um, I am going to finish writing this up. Um, so essentially, um, here, the unstressed syllable in the reduplicated uh, form reduces and eventually drops out. That's enough to uh, remember what we're doing. Now we have the prenasal raising and um, and the, the rest should just do itself except for now we need um, uh, another change. And this will, what happens when you do this? Hold on a sec. I got to see what you're doing. Okay, nothing. Nothing happens. Okay, we're fine. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what happened. It's it, great. It, well, I was just wondering what happened with a nasal coda and one of the diphthongs, but oh, okay. no, but, but nothing okay. nothing happens because the the u becomes um, it, it, be, it or the u or the y or the the e becomes a glide too soon. Mm. Um, anyway, so. Let's do that, and then then so it doesn't matter if it comes before after pre nasal raising. Actually, yes, it does. It does, doesn't it? it should yes. be it should be after pre nasal raising. The reduplication reduction. Uh, pre nasal raising central vowel annihilation. That's where it should be. It should be it should be a part of the central vowel annihilation of the the vowel simplification, um, and so. Uh, we're uh, we've already lost those there, so we're just gonna call it um, uh, by Moriac vowel simplification. All right. Okay. I just want everyone to know that if I were in charge of naming these, <laughs> they would be much less fancy. Who's the diva now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then I think we need the curly brackets, right? Um, and you then two vowels become one. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, then X, X, and then we need a Y. There we go. There we go. Um, uh, the diphthongs. Um, I and ow, right, because they're, 
<gasps> oh my god. They're not... <gasps> <gasps> they're not oh, actually what? a part of the vowels, are they? Oh, no, not once they have lost. Oh, this is so crucial. Because if those simplify, right, mm -hmm. before this happens, then there will be voicing. It will be ka gao bi. Kagalbi. I'm sorry, Kagalbi. So it's got to happen what, after that. So we wouldn't have the that consonant. What? From the P. What what happened to the geminated consonant? No, that one's fine. That one's fine. It's only only for ones that originally had a diphthong. Because that part of the diphthong has already become consonantal. Okay. And so if you remove that part of the diphthong, it doesn't block the voicing that happens later. You see what I mean? Okay, so let's, Wait. let's play this out. Hold on a sec. What happens to the P though? Wait, 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 wait. Oh no, oh no, I'm a foolish fool. No, because it doesn't block it anyway. It shouldn't block it anyway. Right? I need to see it, I need to see it. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay wait. Asia. Okay, Asia is one, and then... Yeah, because there's voicing in Kalpi. Of course it wouldn't block it. There's just blocking in Asia. Why is that? Why is it blocked there? Because the palatalization happens late. That's why the palatalization happens so late. That's why. It okay. Happens. Okay. But we're fine. Going back, going back. So we're fine. Meaning it needs to be voiced or meaning. Because if we go back to where we had typed out our journey for Kalpi Kalpi. Yes. At one point, it's going to be Kalp Kalpi. That's right. Okay. Yes. So. Because but that. That's fine. Degemination de happens after lenition, so yes, that is correct. Okay, we're, we're all good. I, it was just me remembering stuff. It's okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, C plus, sorry, C plus vocalic goes to nothing before a coda. Um, oh, I scrolled way too far. In, but only in reduplication. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, simplify to ah in uh, re reduplicated forms. Um, so actually, it shouldn't be the end of the word. It should be. Yeah. OK. OK. Mm -hmm. um, And okay, and, I, and just end in reduplicated forms only. I'm just so I don't have to write it up. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So, I'm I'm happy with this for the time being. However, I'm very unhappy with the fact that we may have to switch these all to um, after. You know what I'm saying? Like not before, but after. Like, <laughs> <Sweet. laughs> all, all of what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so the, 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 what I'm worried, what I'm worried about is that this is going to end up being reduplicated suffixes as opposed to prefixes because uh, of where the modifiers come. I'm going to look up and consult with a Hawaiian to double check. Okay. Um, and the big difference is that Hawaiian always has penultimate stress. Mm -hmm. So I need to look. I need to look around. Um, if it switches that, it's going to switch where the main stress of these verb forms are. So suddenly, okay. and then that's going to change everything, and rip out all the work that we did today by the roots. It'll all need I to be redone. It. Okay. Love it. <laughs> Life is good. 
Oh my god. So anyway. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> um so there's also have you read Dreyer's paper on the the Greenberg principles with um B O correlations and O P correlations in languages? Was uh was was Dreyer basically saying that uh, Greenberg pulled out of his ass? <laughs> now he actually backs so Dreyer backs it up with quantified data, and he actually updates it and quantifies certain correlations. Some of them can't be correlated, but mm -hmm. some of them can. Basically, anyway, that's if, a side note. If if Dreyer said it, I trust it. Um, that's a good that's a good rule of thumb yeah um, um has he treated reduplication specifically has he looked into reduplication you know i don't know and that's the problem i was just looking at the whether it would be more likely to be prefix or suffix kind of thing mm -hmm. um i would have to look and see if he chris actually took a grad class uh he got to take typology with dryer oh what i know was that trust me i know he, <laughs> he he's on my um, jealousy list he flies planes. I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Study under Matt uh, Dreyer and flies planes. Give me a break. Jeez. <laughs> um, so anyway, I will find that paper. I've got somewhere I've got a chart of the correlations that he shows and backs up. Um, and that's something we can consider later. But it doesn't consider, I don't think it goes specifically into um reduplication it would potentially yeah. give us some sort of feeling or insight to whether these would be more prefixy or suffixy yeah man this is something my goodness we haven't even gotten to the use of the verbs yet i mean a little bit okay so okay so i'm going to first i'm going to get my Pukui and Albert Hawaiian books. I'm going to take a look at those. Then I'm going to Google reduplication. And I need to do it all before Meridian wakes up. Got it. Yeah. All right. So, um... Cool. So, I I'm think... I'm exhausted. What are we doing? The, I think, well, we're wrapping up. And yes. I think the natural sort of thing for um don't worry don't worry dark horse your semaphore where it's it will happen at oh, some point yeah. we'll get there that was brilliant. um yeah we'll, we'll figure something out eventually um but i think a natural poll at this point because it has been voted what our name forms will be so we reached our 20 patrons and so the proto forms it's been like it was overwhelming majority voted for what would result in chasey uh, for the modern form and tvd yeah. for the uh, modern form for your name but now they need to decide what they mean and so mm -hmm. um i think that that would be a natural poll and have it in the same way where it's like in mm -hmm. the comments put your suggestion and then people get to like it and that's your vote we could also do recommendations for uh the words that are going to be associated with the glyphs mm -hmm. that would, yes that that one could be huge, but I don't know. It could be kind of a righteous disaster. I kind of want to see it. It could be could, a righteous disaster. And we could <laughs> and do since both. Since I've taken over uh, quantifying some of those, it'll be it'll be epic. Thanks. Yes, my goodness, you're <laughs> right. Oh wow. <laughs> oh gosh. And then yeah, the V initial forms. Good lord, the V initial forms. I always forget the V initial form. <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. We'll yeah. get there. Okay, so. Cool. Yeah. I think that's a good wrapping place for here, yeah. for right now. Have fun. The, the polls on Patreon will be forthcoming. Yeah. And be, be kind in what our names mean. Yeah, at some point in time, we're going to have to record our, our next podcast, yeah. Yes, because somehow April is halfway over, and so we will be recording a podcast to release on May 1st, Yeah, so that will be happening. Uh, for those who don't know, we have a podcast for, for patrons on Patreon. It's pretty cool. It's, it's just us. I don't know. It's just us talking yeah. about Trans-Siberian Orchestra, or at least that's what the next episode is <laughs> going to be. 
I can, oh, I can tell you information about them. I can talk to you about Anya's little house. And she's got a tiny house in Arkansas. It's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. All right. Cool. It'll go places. All right. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that fun eventually. Don't you worry. <laughs> Gracious. I can't. Conlinging uh, takes time. I can't wait till I get more sleep. <laughs> anyway. But in the meantime. Yeah. Stay grammar. Indeed. <laughs> and we'll catch you next week. Later on. <laughs>